In the post-pandemic world, Chinese businesses are accelerating their push overseas, as the domestic market can no longer absorb their immense production capacity. Companies like Timu and Shein, with their rock-bottom prices, are causing a stir in 23 countries, challenging platforms like Amazon, eBay, and Walmart. Just take a look at the prices on Timu: ten dollars for a hoodie, three dollars for a Bluetooth headset. Items that sell for twenty-five dollars ninety-nine are available as imitations for less than five dollars. A twenty-nine dollars ninety-nine branded microfiber towel on other sites. A similar one on Timu is priced at five dollars eighty-eight. However, behind these dirt cheap prices hides a brutal commercial war. Timu pressures suppliers to prepare hundreds to thousands of units for each restocking. Then Timu insists on product prices that undercut the wholesale prices on China's Alibaba 1688.com. On top of this, they demand sellers themselves to take on additional costs like labeling and shipping. Failure to comply leads to forced product delisting, and potentially Timu withholding product returns for months. Even when goods are eventually returned. The packaging has often been damaged to the point of making the item unsaleable. While on the surface, the price war appears to benefit consumers, in reality, it harms the entire socio-economic system. The most immediate impact is that merchants who insist on selling at regular prices are forced out of the market, unless they too join the price war, leading to an ongoing decrease in prices. Their profits are gradually eroded until they're left with no choice but to exit the market. As more people exit the market, the variety of products supplied would also diminish. This not only reduces the diversity of product supply, but also severely undermines the entire socio-economic system. While some might argue that even though some businesses are exiting, there will be new ones entering. However. These new entrants are also compelled to maintain low prices, leading to a situation where nobody may want to venture in. The ultimate consequence of this is a market where only a few suppliers survive, reliant on low prices to sustain themselves. Once the market was teeming with a diverse variety of products, but now that diversity is dwindling, with innovation taking a hit as well. The difference between the cost of production and the selling price fuels many industries. In the past, when profits were high, businesses were willing to invest in durable packaging, even offering some gifts. However, with profit margins disappearing, all these extra considerations are gone, leaving businesses scrambling to cut costs and minimize labor. This results in fewer job opportunities, a decline in market vitality, and even a slump. These are all the repercussions of a price war. When an industry begins to compete on price, it often signifies a path towards decline, even extinction. What's more frightening is when a platform triggers price wars across all industries, pushing them towards recession. The emergence of Timu has directly nudged all industries towards a low price war, and this is not just empty talk. Delving deeper into the internal operations of these enterprises, we discover that hidden behind these low-price strategies is a show of dominance and control. Their payment speed is incredibly slow, and their invoices are overly simplified, making it impossible for the accounting department to perform accurate calculations. If businesses do not play by their rules, their products can be forcibly removed from the platform with no chance of appeal. Their contractual rules can change at any moment, and if one wishes to litigate, they would have to go to Hong Kong. Small sellers are left helpless, subject to arbitrary deductions, a practice that has already drawn extensive social attention and criticism. In China, these internet companies and suppliers are accused of tax evasion, refusal to pay social security, non-payment of overtime wages. Refusing to bear the cost of pollution, and even having ties with the underworld, they are also blamed for breaking market rules for personal gain, being arrogant and unreasonable, and seriously damaging social morality. Inside the companies, surveillance, snitching, and internal strife are prevalent, with the 996 work system being advocated. This refers to working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. 
Alibaba's microcredit service Huabei can be opened as long as one is 18 years old, causing many young people lacking self-discipline to fall into financial debt. E-commerce has disrupted society. Once bustling malls gradually fade, and now these platforms are attempting to replace traditional markets, depriving more people of the chance to make a living, with the money instead flowing into the pockets of these e-commerce giants. This is like the situation of a clothes seller and a restaurant owner. The restaurant owner used to buy clothes from the clothes seller, who in turn would dine at the restaurant. But now, the restaurant owner finds clothes online cheaper and starts shopping there. The clothes seller's income decreases, and they have no money to dine at the restaurant. In the end, both the restaurant owner and the clothes seller see their business declining, even facing bankruptcy. Previously, everyone was part of a long economic chain, but now. Online shopping has shortened this chain and concentrated wealth, creating capital monopolies. How can we achieve common prosperity this way? Timu's low-price strategy has disrupted the market of domestic and foreign suppliers. Most sellers say they can't make money from selling on Timu, and many suppliers choose to retreat. Those who remained are factories with certain supply chain advantages, but who are poor at e-commerce operations. On Timu's platform, the range of products is limited. They are just cheap with no unique characteristics. So, when you enjoy these low-cost goods, have you ever thought about the hidden secrets behind them? Faced with this business war, should we re-examine our consumption behavior and business ethics? The good quality and low price of Chinese products is largely due to the poor human rights at Chinese companies. The 996 work system in private enterprises and the overtime culture in state-owned enterprises. They sacrifice their employees' normal lives, deliberately avoid labor laws, and cut down on labor costs. The values promoted by Chinese suppliers, such as treating the company as a family, prioritizing the company's interests, and company loyalty, are not universally accepted worldwide. They belong to workplace PUA. Which is not correct. Yet, because of China's current phase where labor laws are virtually decorations, this PUA has been widely accepted. However, the practices of Chinese companies have taken away the leisure time of several generations of young people, sacrificed their future, and waged price wars all over the world. Once the essence of this is recognized by Western society, government, and people. The slogan that allows Western consumers to enjoy the happiness of shopping like a billionaire, even in an era of inflation, will eventually become a joke. It may eventually lead to Chinese products being completely banned in Western countries. At present, Timu loses thirty dollars from every order, and its business losses in countries like Canada, Australia, and New Zealand have reached forty-one point five to sixty-seven point three billion RMB. Most of the operating costs are borne by its main investor, Pinduoduo. An enthusiastic consumer won over six thousand dollars worth of goods through a series of promotional operations for Timu on social media, such as playing games and developing new users. He was given goods including four Switch game consoles, an ice cream machine, and a pile of children's clothes and toys. But he didn't pay for these goods. All these costs were borne by Pinduoduo in the name of expanding its user base. Just like in 2020, when Wish used 1.7 billion dollars in marketing expenses to achieve 2.5 billion dollars in sales, this loss-making marketing strategy may yield some results in the short term. But in the long run, this model is unsustainable. When Wish stopped this marketing model in 2022. Its annual sales plummeted to about five hundred million dollars. Now, Wish's stock price has dropped by eighty-seven percent, and the losses continue to increase. Inspired by Pinduoduo's success in China, people generally think that Timu can avoid the pitfalls Wish encountered. However, Timu still can't escape the issues of poor product quality, difficult shipping, and service problems. Timu's quality issues were exposed, especially in markets like the UK, where demand for product quality is high. On April 21 this year, Timu entered the UK market 
and received a torrent of consumer complaints in a short span of time. From the poor quality of goods to subpar service and delivery delays, Timur received a dismal rating of just 2.35 stars on the UK's Better Business Bureau. This not only reflected the widespread dissatisfaction with Timur, but also served as compelling evidence of their inability to deliver on promises. Faced with a rising tide of complaints, Timur's stride into the UK market became increasingly arduous. These complaints were like a wake-up slap to the overly optimistic consumers. The same tragedy played out in other countries. Chinese communities in Canada and Australia held equally negative views of Timu. Post on Xiaohongshu, the Chinese social media platform complaining about the company mostly revolved around Timu's focused on low-cost promotions while ignoring product quality when entering new markets, completely unveiling Timu's facade. Timu's mantra is team up to price down, but the reality is it can only be achieved within certain limits. If one persistently chases low prices, recklessly reducing costs, then this mantra ultimately becomes an unfulfillable promise. Someone might think, no problems, I can return the goods. But when you embark on the path of returns, you will find it full of thorns. The refund process is cumbersome, and returning items is an uphill battle. Each time you see the items, your mind fills with fatigue and frustration. When the next Chinese company waving the banner of low prices appears, you might choose to ignore it entirely. You've personally experienced the cost of low prices, and you're longing for quality, service, and a truly enjoyable shopping experience. Let's go back more than 20 years to Vietnam, where the motorcycle market underwent a similar journey. At that time, Chinese motorcycles quickly captured the market with their low prices and similar designs. But to prevent the domestic market from being completely controlled by foreign entities, the Vietnamese government implemented a series of strict import restrictions. This led to Chinese motorcycle companies gradually withdrawing from the Vietnamese market. Today, despite significant improvements in Chinese motorcycle technology and quality, they struggle to find buyers in Vietnam. This isn't just a reflection on market strategy, but a lesson in respect, understanding, and cooperation. Timur and Xi'in are currently facing regulatory pressure from the US government, and the hidden issues behind them are being exposed. Imagine the tired workers going in and out of large factories, their wages not meeting international standards. This is part of the supply chain of Timur and Xi'in, their success built on the low wages and unfair sacrifices of others. Using the small parcel loophole in US law, these two companies avoid duties and sales taxes, keeping their product prices low. The tax exemption policy established by the Obama administration to reduce supplier costs is now benefiting Chinese cross-border e-commerce, allowing their products to be sold in the US without paying taxes. According to data, half of the small parcels come from China. 60% of which are sent by Timur and Xi'in. The US government and civil organizations criticize this tax evasion behavior, believing it harms the interests of local merchants and poses a threat to the retail industry. A new bill has been proposed to cancel this tax exemption for goods. Moreover, the advocacy group Coalition for Prosperity America criticizes Timur and Xi'in for violating the US Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act calls for investigations into whether they have used forced labor and points out that they evade substantial duties harming the interests of U.S. businesses. A committee of the U.S. House of Representatives issued a statement believing that such behavior harms the interests of U.S. local merchants and poses a threat to the U.S. retail industry. Due to concerns about the far-reaching impact of this behavior on society, the U.S. government has proposed a new bill aimed at cancelling the tax exemption of these goods. Timur bypasses traditional retail channels, selling goods directly from Chinese factories to American consumers, redistributing the benefits of global retail channels. Such shocking changes have shaken the U.S. economy, 
middlemen have lost their profits, tax revenues have drastically decreased, and the U.S. market has become a place to offload China's excess capacity. The U.S. House of Representatives Special Committee on China-U.S. Strategic Competition even issued a report, leveling sanctions and multiple accusations against Timu and Xi'in for issues like supply chain opacity, copyright infringement, and data collection. Take Lego blocks as an example. An original Lego set selling for over hundred dollars in the U.S. could be intimidated in China, though it has a different name. It resembles Lego in shape and appearance, but costs only a fraction of the price. However, when the consumers receive the product, they find that these blocks are rough, uneven, and emit an indescribable chemical smell. Consumers' decision to opt for the cheaper Lerping over original Lego is eroding the market share of U.S. manufacturers. Likewise, their choice to shop on Timu instead of Amazon is negatively impacting Amazon's business. The once stable market share across various channels in the U.S. retail sector crumbled overnight. Last year, Amazon already suffered a loss of $2.7 billion and is currently facing the reality of 99% of small and medium-sized sellers planning to open stores on other e-commerce platforms. Timu's sales record and rating system are plagued with credibility issues, often leaving consumers without adequate after-sales service after purchase. In stark contrast, Amazon, with its standardized operations and excellent resolutions of problems, provides a high level of reassurance for consumers. Facing the risk of losing regular operating vendors like Amazon, people are starting to worry about the future trajectory of the American shopping experience. Will Western consumers have to, like Chinese consumers, do extensive homework before shopping to find satisfactory products? This would undoubtedly bring frustration to many. In light of Chinese enterprises not investing deeply in their markets, but shattering existing international markets with low prices and trying to reshape industry standings, people understand the necessity of interventions and sanctions by Western governments. The U.S. government's sanctions against Chinese tech giant Huawei and India's restrictions on electronics manufacturer Xiaomi, for example. Are all aimed at maintaining market fairness, preventing market monopolies, and protecting consumers' interests. Though the market competition environment is harsh, democratically elected governments have shown their sense of responsibility and wisdom. We look forward to all companies, especially Chinese ones, understanding and implementing fair and transparent principles in global market competition sooner rather than later. Instead of seeking short-term competitive advantages at the expense of sacrificing product quality or disrupting market rules. In closing, if you've enjoyed our video and found the content valuable, we encourage you to like, subscribe, and share it with others who might benefit. Each like, share, and subscription not only shows your support for our efforts, but also helps us reach a wider audience with this important information. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to receive notifications for our future content. We truly appreciate your help and engagement. Thank you.